Ever since her introduction in the third issue of NYX back in 2003, Laura Kinney got all the X-Men fans buzzing, and she definitely got a new wave of fans owing to her crucial role in Logan and Deadpool and Wolverine. Since she was created as a scientific experiment, it comes as no surprise that there might be more to her than meets the eye. Well, if you're curious about all of her powers, the obvious and the not-so-obvious ones, then this video is for you. Today we'll be taking a good look at all the powers Laura has, and hopefully by the end of the video, we'll know just why she is such a dangerous mutant to go up again. But before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Hello, Let's man, begin. Come. This is who I've been telling you about. This is Laura. We've been waiting for you. Who is she? Thanks to the movie Logan, we all have a basic idea of who Laura Kinney is. She was one of the several experimentally created mutants for the Alkali Transigen Project, and she happens to have been created from Wolverine's DNA. But in the comics, Laura's origin story is not exactly this. It's far more gruesome in my opinion, so let me give you an idea of Laura from the comics. So there was this geneticist called Sarah Kinney. She used to work for the facility, which mostly focused on creating genetically altered super soldiers. After 22 failed attempts at making a male super soldier with Wolverine's genes, Sarah suggested creating a female specimen instead. Just like we saw in the movie Splice, despite all warnings, Sarah decided to get rather intimate with her science project by using her own genetic material with Wolverine's to create the embryo. And then she decided to be the surrogate mother for the experiment. Eventually, Sarah gave birth to a daughter who is the fabled X-23. Since her birth, X-23 was trained to be the most lethal weapon out there. She was beaten down every day by her trainer, Kimura. Sarah, who has this motherly affection for X-23, decided to help her escape the facility and named her Laura. This moment of tenderness changed the way Laura perceived the world, and she decided that maybe the world would be a better place without the genetically altered super soldiers like her. So, she decided to go after after each one of these super soldiers and murder them. She tracked Wolverine to the X-Mansion and attacked him. However, Wolverine was able to talk her out of her intent to kill him and instead got her enrolled in the Xavier Institute. Thanks to the teachings of the Institute, Laura ended up becoming a vital member of the killer X-Force, X-Men in training, and at one point she became a student of the Avengers Academy. Seeing Laura grow from this brutal, mindless killing machine to this gentle girl who was willing to sacrifice her freedom if it only meant her friends could walk freely was genuinely such a heartwarming character arc. But don't be fooled by her tenderness, because Laura is literally created to be a lethal weapon. Now let's have a look at her powers, which make her such a threat. Her healing ability is more powerful than Wolverine. Every X-Men fan knows that our boy Wolverine has quite the healing abilities. I mean, he literally goes on the most dangerous missions because of his healing ability. Laura, Wolverine's daughter, also has the same powers. Her primary ability is regenerative healing. This allows her to have a higher cell duplication rate, which helps her heal and regenerate any damaged or destroyed tissue at a faster rate. And I'm not talking about paper cuts and gashes. I'm talking about slashes through the abdomen bullet wounds, and severe blood loss due to profound blood vessel and muscle damage. And with all of these things, Laura is able to heal within just a minute. In fact, her healing ability is so advanced and developed that if you sever her limbs, she would simply have to hold the severed limb up to the stump and it would be reattached. If she can't reattach the missing limb, no worries, Laura can grow the limb herself. How cool is that? But yes, one point to be noted is that Laura's healing factor is very much dependent on her psychological state. If she harms herself, then those wounds tend to take longer to heal because of the deep psychological impacts those wounds have on her. She has extra claws. Given that Laura is Wolverine's daughter, obviously we were expecting her to have claws, right? But here's the thing, she has special claws that Wolverine does not have. We know that Wolverine has three retractable claws on each hand, correct? Well, when it comes to our girl Laura, she actually has two retractable claws on each hand, and she has one claw on each of her feet. This particular foot claw comes out of the base of her toes, which gives her this extra oomph factor that I guess Wolverine didn't have. Xavier explains 
explained it to be a gender thing. Usually, the lioness is more superior when it comes to hunting. So given that Laura would grow up to be a fine woman who probably won't have as much muscle strength or height as Wolverine does, this extra foot claw allows her to use her lithe figure and agile movements as a weapon. This is definitely a fun addition that's completely unique to her character out of all the Wolverine spawn. Come on. That's enough. These two. Not okay. She does not have an adamantium skeleton. When you see Laura fight, it would be hard to miss the telltale metallic shine of her claws. She definitely has a coating of adamantium all over her claws. But what about her skeleton? We all know that Logan went through this extremely painful procedure where his entire skeleton was coated in adamantium. So, did Laura go through the same? Well, not exactly. In both the comics and the movie, we can see that Laura's claws were taken out of her body, coated in adamantium, and then reinserted. Her healing factor helped in the attachment of her claws to their right places. In the movie Logan, we get this one shot where Laura is seen lying on a hospital bed with her forearm and shin cut open. The adamantium claws were seen at her feet. However, in the comics, this entire process was done while she was still in her senses. So while she might not have gone through the torture of getting her entire skeleton coated in adamantium as her father had, she definitely went through her fair share of pain when it came to adamantium coating. Given that she doesn't have an adamantium skeleton, this forces Laura to plan her attacks in a much more tactical way in comparison to Logan, who does not have to worry about getting his bones broken. Why is she faster than her father? We can assume that given Laura was made in a lab, she got quite a few genetic upgrades that no one else can boast about. Perhaps that's why she has quite the strength, agility, and durability. Thanks to her significantly high flexibility, agility, coordination, and balance, she's able to move, flip, and do a lot of acrobatic moves at a tremendous speed with no issues. She literally runs as fast as an accelerating vehicle because of her enhanced physiology. This agility, combined with her enhanced strength and durability, makes Laura move significantly faster. However, there's another reason why Laura seems to be faster than her father. Adamantium is an indestructible metal, and as we know, each metal has its own weight. No matter how lightweight something is, it would definitely make a significant, noticeable difference if that metal is used to coat someone else's entire skeleton. Since Laura only has her claws coated, the rest of her body is significantly lighter in weight compared to her father's. So now you know why, even as a kid, Laura was able to overpower adults who are twice her size. <laughs> X-23's Berserker Rage is deadlier than Logan. Given how much tragedy Wolverine saw in his life, it's safe to say that Logan is a traumatized man. While Charles Xavier helped him with therapy, Wolverine never quite got a hold of his anger, so he turned it into a weapon, which we call the Berserker Rage. As the name implies, this is a type of maddening rage that Wolverine uses to deliver epic beatdowns on his enemies. When we get angry, we get a huge adrenaline surge, but eventually the adrenaline level starts to fall and we end up returning to our normal cell, right? Well, when it comes to Wolverine, he can keep that adrenaline level high for as long as he needs to ensure he can pull off an epic beatdown. This is quite deadly, as you can imagine, because our boy Wolverine was never the man who preferred being gentle with his fight. Similarly, Laura has her berserker rage too. In the movie Logan, we get to see the father and daughter go on an all-out war with with the Reavers with the Reavers who were after them. While that fight may have gotten you pumped and made you go, hell yeah, the comic book counterpart of Laura's Berserker Rage is tragic. Instead of it being this state of uncontrollable rage, in the comics, Laura was meant to have this trigger scent. If this scent was on a target and Laura came in contact with it, she would instantly turn into this remorseless and frankly unstoppable killer until she could neutralize her target. A lot of people use this target scent to use Laura as their killer, and while it's been healed, Laura still carries a heavy burden in her heart from all the rampages that she has caused due to this target scent. In fact, Laura killed her mother, Dr. Kinney, in a trigger scent induced haze because the doctor was tagged with it by the people at the facility. After wounding Dr. Kinney fatally, X-23 came back to her senses. As she held her in her arms, Sarah Kinney gave her the name Laura and called her her daughter. She also gave Laura instructions on how to find Charles Xavier and Wolverine, which Laura eventually used to track Wolverine down. No. Move! Go! Yeah. Yeah. 
detects predator senses, tracking by sight, sound, and scent. There's a very good reason why the whole target scent trigger worked for Laura. See, Laura has superhuman senses. In fact, her senses are as accurate as some animals. She can see across vast differences with complete clarity. She can even see one single sentinite using just her naked eye. For those of you who don't know, the sentinites are nano sentinels which were created to convert human flesh into killing machines by using biometallic robotization. So obviously, these things were super duper tiny. Like literally three of these could probably fit in a red blood cell. And Laura here could see each of them without a microscope. Talk about 2020 vision, right? And even if you put her in the dark, she would be able to sense you and see with the same clarity because that is just how adapted her body is. She can also hear sounds that we can't hear, and the distance is not even a factor. No matter how great the distance is, Laura is able to hear anything if she focuses just enough. And her olfactory senses are just as sharp. She can smell and track her targets with ease, even if hours have gone by. In fact, one time, she detected that a murder victim had high cholesterol just by using her sense of smell. Thanks to these senses, Laura was often used as a predator, sent after people who the bad guys thought needed to be disposed of by tagging them with the target scent. And once you have that on you, you can for sure start counting your days and bidding farewell to friends and family because Laura will find you and she will kill you. She's immune to poison. Obviously, when you have a killer like her after you, you have to come up with things that might take her down. We already know that guns or knives won't do anything to her because she can easily heal those wounds. So you might think poisoning her would do the trick. Well, sadly, it won't. As it turns out, her natural healing is beyond just cell repair and tissue management. It also provides her with immunity against anything that her body deems as a foreign object. So poison and most drugs do not work on Laura. However, she can be sedated for a while, but the dose has to be massive. But there's no guarantee that she'll stay unconscious for a long time. Well, as long as we normal people would if we were drugged that heavily. X-23 and her Muramasa armor is a deadly combination. Laura's had quite a few adventures over the years, but one of her most iconic story arcs has to be the Orphans of X. In this story arc, Laura and her sidekick, younger version Gabby, were tracking down Dokken, Wolverine's son. They found Dokken's left arm hanging from a bridge, and there was a particular scent on it that Laura recognized. She assumed that Dokken was taken to the facility, the same place that she was born and brought up in. So to save her half-brother, Laura decided to go into the facility. She found this tank, which was submerged. Obviously, in labs, usually this is where the hero finds their friend. So Laura brought it out and smashed it. But instead of Dokken rolling it out, it was Sarah Kinney, her mom. Apparently, after Laura walked away from her mom, thinking she was dead, Sarah was saved by someone. She doesn't know who, but this person is after Wolverines. Now, one known weakness of the Wolverines is the Muramasa blade, which was forged with a piece of Logan's soul. So it can slice through any and every Wolverine if one stands in its path. So Laura called Carol Danvers and asked her how to throw the Muramasa blade straight into the sun. However, right then, gunfire was heard outside. Laura came out of the house only to see Dokken recklessly driving a car. Dawkins was a bit surprised that no one was coming after him and decided to go inside with Laura. Turns out he has been tortured for days by the Orphans of X, and they had specifically been monitoring this house. This house was Laura's aunt's place, so obviously that was not a good sign. Dokken found it odd that Laura suddenly found her mother and brought her back to life, so he decided to shoot at Sarah. Laura, Gabby, and Megan immediately attacked Dokken and refused to believe that the Sarah Kinney in front of her was not her mother. Finally, when she kneeled next to her, she saw Sarah's eyes glow a bright green color and she said that the Orphans of X were coming for her. Laura tried to call off Carol from throwing the Muramasa blade into the sun, but it was too late. The Muramasa blade ended up in the hands of Amber Griffin. Seeing that they were in a pretty tough spot, Laura called up the AI pilot of X-Men called Danger. Danger helped them evade the pursuing helicopters. When asked for a destination, Laura suggested they go to Tokyo as Madripoor would not be safe for them. In Tokyo, Laura, Gabby, Dakin, Jonathan, Megan, and Debbie went to Muramasa himself. They told him of their predicament and he forged them a set of armor using essence from Laura, Gabby, and Dakin. He also added in the essence of Logan that he already had from forging the Muramasa. Masa shield. Laura donned this Muramasa armor and used it to protect everyone she cared about from the attacks of the Ham, who were sent after them by the orphans. The battle between a Muramasa armor-clad Laura and the orphans was truly a sight to behold. It was definitely a nice addition to Laura's secret abilities. 
she once becomes Captain Universe. We have quite a few notable forces in the X-Men universe. I mean, the Phoenix Force is the major one of them, and let's be real, it's quite dangerous. The Enigma Force, on the other hand, is not as popular as the Phoenix Force, at least in the X-Men universe. The Enigma Force is the god of light, which originated when the universe was created. As the universe is all about balance, when the dark god Knoll was created, this Enigma Force was created to balance it out. Over several years, the Enigma Force tried to fight against the dark god Knoll. However, it realized that since it had been bonding with too many people, its powers were getting a bit too thin actually to be of any help. So to prevent that, the god of light decided to only bind with one single host. This host is the Captain Universe. At one point, Laura took a job at this nightclub in the Mutant Town district. There, she saved the daughter of mob boss Dan Parisi from a bunch of thugs. Now, because of her claws, the deaf were very similar to Wolverine's attacks, and he was being blamed for killing these people. But Wolverine had not done anything, so he and his X-Men friends decided to investigate the murders themselves. When they came to the site, Laura immediately attacked Wolverine, but he was able to calm her down. She even helped them save victims of a car accident. Seeing her potential, she was enrolled in the X-Men's Xavier Institute. There, she became rather protective of Wolverine. She even attacked Bishop when Bishop whooped Wolverine's ass in a training session. At one point, she started stalking Wolverine using the security monitors of the mansion. However, one day, X-23 noticed a spike in energy, which he decided to investigate. This spike of energy turned out to be Spider-Man, whom Laura thought to be the enemy at first glance. However, she quickly realized Peter meant no harm, and helped him save Paul Patterson from this alternate variant of Iron Man. Seeing as this investigation was rather fun, Laura started following Wolverine on his investigation. In fact, she followed him all the way to the Canadian Rocky. However, she was ambushed by Haka from the Savage Land. Realizing the threat, Laura managed to escape from there and alert the X-Men about what she saw. This led to the X-Men team, along with Laura, teaming up with Kazar to defeat Haka, who was hellbent on destroying humans by abusing Storm's powers. With all of these achievements in her bag, Laura was eventually approached by the Enigma Force. Although at first she wanted nothing to do with it, as the Unipower wanted to use Laura's healing ability in a certain way, Laura eventually relented and became Captain Universe. Many mutants lose their powers after M-Day, but X-23 didn't. As X-Men fans, we all know about M-Day, where, thanks to Wanda, mutants mostly lost their powers. Out of the students, Laura was one of the very few who managed to keep their power. While she stayed back, her depowered friends and staff were sent home on a bus. However, this bus was bombed by Reverend William Stryker and his purifiers. Emma Frost, who was apparently lurking around waiting for a chance, decided to take all the surviving students and perform a very own free brawl. Those who performed the best would be a part of the new new trainee team of X-Men. While Emma tried her best not to include Laura in this brawl, Laura managed to defeat students and ended up becoming one of the seven students who ended up being a part of the new trainee X-Men. Call it sheer luck or a mere coincidence. However, having a powered Laura definitely helped the X-Men face off against Reverend William Stryker as he was out to kill every mutant to ever exist. The Unbroken Barrier, a mystery of her psychic defense. Laura is a strong girl, both physically and mentally. Her psychic defenses were up so high that it made it difficult for even the strongest telepaths to get inside her mind. When she first joined Xavier School, Emma required quite a bit of time to get inside Laura's mind and probe through her memory. Similarly, when Mr. Sinister wanted to take over Laura's body, Laura was able to forcefully reject Mr. Sinister's consciousness with E, preventing him from taking over her body. So even if you're an Omega-level telepath, you won't be able to take down Laura as easily as you can take down other mutants. She has claws like her father in a different universe. Over the years, Wolverine has had a few kids. However, none of them end up with his signature three claws on each hand. Even Earth-616 Laura doesn't have that. But fear not, if you too have been excitedly waiting for a child of Wolverine to share his iconic three claws with, then the wait is over. In 2005, a miniseries came out titled X-Men Age of Apocalypse. In the universe of this miniseries, X-23 is seen going by the name Kiriko. She was created by Mr. Sinister and was saved by Magneto. At the end of this particular miniseries, we learn that she is Wolverine's daughter, with Mariko Yoshida being her mother. 
Just like her father, she has three claws on each hand, and the metal on these claws was grafted by Magneto after Kiriko requested him to do it. This version of Laura was killed during the Dark Angel saga by the crazy AOA version of Wolverine while she was trying to free the Gateway. If you look at the Earth-616 universe, you'll soon realize that Kiriko is a mix of Laura and her foster sister, Amiko Kobayashi. If you were to ask me to choose between Kiriko and Laura, I really wouldn't be able to make up my mind. They're are both just so cool. <laughs> Marvelous verdict. Laura Kenny is not someone you want as your enemy. She's strong, agile, and super efficient at slicing and dicing, and she'd be able to smell your fear even before you can. I'd say that all of these make her a pretty lethal character. With so many tricks up her sleeves, it would definitely be difficult to defeat her. Wouldn't you agree? Let us know in the comments which powers you didn't know about, and I'll see you in the next video. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one, and be safe. Thanks, everyone.